Ladies and gentlemen, you tuned in. New episode, Music is Love Language. I'm your host, Clint Coley. No AKAs. I'm not promoting shit. Let's get down to business. Mm. Y'all see who's on the motherfucking mm. podcast. One of my best friends, period. Gang. We're not even just talking about it in the bit. Period. Period. Hard period. Period. Ladies and gentlemen, the incomparable Mr. Tahir Moore, y'all. Hey, let's- yay. Thank yay. you for having me. I'm here, man. Finally, I'm finally dog. here, bro. You know what? I, I have been the schedule's been crazy. It's all good. And you you've been traveling. Mm-hmm. When I saw Tony Baker was on here, I was like, if Tony came out of his rock from underneath, you know, he rock, don't come out of the house. He for, don't come out of the house, especially especially for how far I live from the yeah, valley. Yeah, man, from like, him, yeah. Tony say far from everybody. I know. And then he came out here. But I, I know it was it was also motivated because you were talking about Nas. Yeah, man, he ain't so, like that. I didn't like what you said about Nas. Listen, man. Y'all I didn't can, like it. I didn't like it. Y'all can take what I said with a grain of salt. <laughs> I'm not taking it with nothing. I'm taking it with bull. That's bullshit. Nas nice picked bad beats. Did. He did. But on his album, he said, you know, well, you know, the first thing you probably heard me about me was I picked bad beats. Well, now I pick bad freaks. Like, hey, <laughs> I respect that. Nas is still relevant. Nas is still mm-hmm. a spitter. He's yes. still revered as one of the greatest MCs. That was never in question. Mm-hmm. Only thing that I said was he picked trash beats. That's it. And that's okay. That's, that's okay. It. But this is this episode ain't about Nas. But it's I didn't not. like I didn't like that comment. <laughs> and I'm not gonna ask. I should make you take it back so that we can continue this part. Take it back to here. I'm not taking it. Take back. it back. What I'm is, standing on it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank y'all for listening. <laughs> thank y'all for laughing. <laughs> this, <laughs> this podcast is over. <laughs> no, let's go. No, nah, man. So I can honestly say, right? Mm-hmm. How we so. First of all, real quick, a lot of people don't really remember, a lot don't don't know how we met in the first place. Uh, Tahir and I met damn near, what was it, 13 years ago, it was at the Bay Area Black Comedy Competition, 2010, uh, I remember Insane Wayne was the winner, mm-hmm. Nate Jackson was the host, mm-hmm. but there was you, myself, mm-hmm. Shinadu, BT Kingsley, like the list goes on, it's all, it, Anthony, it, yeah, it, yeah, it was, was a, a lot of there. motherfuckers there, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I say all that to say though. You know, I was like, yeah, man. He was like, yo, yeah. He was like, yo, I live in L- I'm from St. Louis or East Saint, but I live in L.A. You know what mm-hmm, I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I said, yo, I ain't living in L.A. yet. And I said, yo, I'm going to move out there in about three or five months. Mm-hmm. I know niggas say that all the time. Mm-hmm. I called you up. I was like, yeah, nigga, guess what? I'm here. I remember what Clint had on. He had on this orange and white and green and white and blue and white striped that- polo. <laughs> he had, there was a polo button-up shirt. Then he had on the orange polo up. A cable sweater over that. My nigga was dapper. I'll show y'all the. I'll put the. I'll put the picture in the clip. You know what I mean? Cause I know exactly. It was a cream sickle ass. I thought I was doing it, man. Hey, look, no low key. No, I looked at y'all. I was like, who this nigga think he is? Me? <laughs> I thought I was doing it, dog. I it was clean. I remember when I bought that. I remember the vest itself was like eighty. Yeah. The 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 shirt was like eighty five. Yeah. And then the tie was probably maybe like forty, right? Yeah. But I remember I was like, yo, this the vest sweater, the sweater vest shirt combination was like one hundred sixty dollars. I said, I'm gonna wear this shit one hundred sixty times, nigga. Fuck hey, that. as you said, <laughs> I remember he's like, yeah, two way my OG. I came to rep. It, you know what I'm I, remember, I remember it all, man. That was a good time. But I say all that because I remember, I remember though, right? The first time I really started like saying, like, yo, this might be my man. This my this my boy, man. We was riding around and you was listening to Nas actually. Mm-hmm. A mm-hmm. Cooking Soul remix Cookin Soul, yeah. of, of Second Childhood. Shout mm-hmm. out to Cooking Soul, right? But it was a Cooking Soul remix. And then at that point, I realized, like, damn, like, I, f- I, I met a nigga who likes music yeah. the same way I do. Yeah. We say music is a love language all the time. Bro, that also includes your friends. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of times we sit here and think, oh, it's a romantic thing. It's yeah. like I'm putting a woman on the music, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But it's only you and my best friend, Dom, mm. who I really say as, as as my homeboys, I fuck with y'all music taste. Hell yeah, bro. Like, I love, the f- I love meeting somebody that has a similar taste in music, but also mm-hmm. has an ear for spotting new music too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And like when you, when you, when you meet somebody like that, mm-hmm. uh, you're like, yo, I, I got to fuck with this person yeah. right here because they, they get you on a different wavelength. I feel like music is, it's the ultimate, uh, expression of creativity. Mm. Uh, because it's not just sometimes just, the the words, it's mm-hmm. also the rhythm. It's mm-hmm. also the medley, mm-hmm. medley. Um, it's, it's so many things that go into a song. Mm-hmm. Um, and for a person to relate to that and then, put you on it based on your personality because I hear tons of dope shit mm-hmm. and I know some shit that 
is going to rock for me mm-hmm. that I can share with Farron. Mm-hmm. And some of the stuff I listen to, I rock with, I can share with you. Mm-hmm. But, you, you know, knowing the personality, a person's personality and what they like and sharing something with them, mm-hmm. it's almost like a gift. It's as special as giving them a gift yeah, for facts. real. We, here's the thing. We've been sharing music. Like, sharing music became a thing. And when I say a thing, like, you know, people, you know, glorify, like, yo, I'm sharing music. You share music. Share. Nigga, we've been doing that since... Yeah, for, we've been doing it for a while. For a long ass... And, yeah. on some, and, it, and it wasn't even... It, it, it'd be like... On some random shit. Yeah. Like, yo, like, I be doing, I could be minding my business. Three o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. Yep. Hey, man, listen to this real Check quick. Check this out. Check this yeah, out real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I want to, that, that's where I want to bring in today's topic, right? Okay. And I want to talk about the first time you heard something. Mm. I want you to give me, I'm going to give you five five artists or songs. Mm. You're going to give me five artists of so, or songs mm-hmm. that you remember the first time you heard them and you said, my God! Why? Okay. Who Why? goes first? Because I, I, you, you, my guest, brother. Hold on, let me, let me, let me, let me. Uh, uh, you know what I'm coming with first. You know I'm coming with All first. All right, Ty here. Yeah. First times. Mm-hmm. One spit. Right. Now, first of all, real fans, real fans. Mm-hmm. Calling me the spitter, spitter and dreddy, and dreddy. You know what I mean? You know what, I mean? Uh, uh, what what else? Hot spitter, hot spitter. <laughs> God damn me! Uh, you got currency. You Cur- got currency. The hot spitter. Currency. The hot spitter. Uh, yes. He got he got he got a lot of monikers. And man. then don't forget, we keep the e in it. And his own yeah. switches. It, no. it did, didn't talk about it. If I ain't Frank really living. It. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, man. Got, jet life. Jet life. You see it. Jet life, it's baby. Tatted. Jet see, life. This is more than just a, a, a logo. Jet life. This is really a lifestyle. Jet life. J E T. Just enjoy, enjoy this. this life. Or Jets. Just enjoy this, this shit. J E T S. It's more than just a cool rapper for me, bro. Mm-hmm. Spitter was a, a really an inspiration, bro. I ain't going to even hold you. Like, mm-hmm. I first heard Spitter. On um, where the cash at? Where the cash at? And yep. that had to be like 2006 Six-ish? when yeah. I heard it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I I didn't hear from him for a while. He was on a couple things here and there. But mm-hmm. when I moved out to LA in 2009, mm-hmm. and he was working with Dane mm. on on the, the label that he had, I think Creative Control or, or uh, something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's when he had came out with that first album. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, with, with Michael Knight on it. What was it? Michael uh, Knight. What was it? What's the name of the album? I don't know. Um, I ain't gonna hold you. you a better spitter fan than I. Oh am. man, I, I you know you know how I feel. But he came out with that album, and mm. that's when I took notice of him. And then I went back and found a playlist and everything like that. Let me ask you uh, this: Do you remember where you exactly were the first time you felt like, damn, like spitter's my guy? I was at the crib. You was a you was a crib. I was at, I was at, I was at the crib. No, oh, I, I thought you said you was a crib. I'm like, no, no, God, no, no, damn, no, 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 Michael no. Jackson, a fucking vice nah, nah, lord. Nah, now you, yeah, yeah, nah, nah, you nah. a crib to him? I was in Hollywood at the old apartment. Okay, on Van Ness, I remember that on Van Ness. On yeah. Van Ness, mm-hmm. and I was listening to Pilot Talk. Yes, and I was like, yo, this nigga crazy. Mm-hmm. With it. And shortly after that, I heard uh, Pilot I, I, Talk. I, I, I went back and I checked out. Uh, uh, how high the joint mm-hmm. he did with uh with Wiz Khalifa. That was a crazy play. Uh. That was a cl- crazy mixtape. Mm-hmm. And I just went back and just dived into everything, bro. Mm-hmm. And you yeah, know, man. I'm a um you tried to put me on spitter back then, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know what it was, but I just wasn't feeling it, right? Yeah, no, nah, it'd be like that. I don't know what it was, but I just wasn't feeling it. Then Louis G. Mm-hmm. We're Sounds riding cool. around in Portland, right? Mm-hmm. And we're listening to uh Hunter Spokes and New Clothes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and he said this line. He says, uh, Tug a war with my girl because I can't split into two people. Yeah. Want to work just as bad as I want to be with you. Sitting in my homeboy Regal, hiding the eagle. Listen to a new... Like, nigga, Listen. the first time I heard that, I was in Portland. This was about 2015, 2016. I said, Lou, who the fuck is this? Listen. He said, nigga, this is better. Currency. I said, currency? And I remember yeah. I, I the very next day I called you. I said, nigga, why you ain't tell me about this? Hey, listen. That nigga Currency said on one track, he said... Emotional luggage, nothing, never. I don't pack bags. I just move on, live that bullshit in the past. Mm-hmm. That one line mm-hmm. hit me so hard. Yes. Because at the time, I, I'm, I'm, I'm eons from where I am right now as far as like being, you know, uh, uh, transparent, uh, being a man, just being a man, yes, being a man, being right? a man yes. and so I would, I, I resonated with that because like, yeah, I don't really do the feelings like that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, emotional luggage, nothing, nothing, we don't pack bags, 
We just move on, leave that bullshit in the pack. Bro, that line hit me so hard. And I, from that moment on, I was like, yeah, bro. I, 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 I was all about everything jet life, bro. That's dope. And it's, it's, it's been that way since. Y'all know. Uh, bought him a- some people know I bought him a car. Mm-hmm. Um, and gifted him the car because I had I had interviewed him for Rolling Loud one time. And I told him I was going to get him a car. Mm-hmm. And I, I know he didn't believe me because he would just be saying shit in passing. All the time. But I was able to, like, you know be in a position where I could do that and keep my word and also mm-hmm. bless somebody that had blessed us mm-hmm. with so much music, bro. Mm-hmm. Remember that time when he put out like 14 projects? Nigga, like he put out a, months? yeah, like, a remember it was like Andretti 930. Yeah. Andretti, yes. one of my favorite tracks of him, period, is on Andretti 1030. Uh, what is it, John? And the G's walk in and, and everything cold. You know what I mean? Money on the side. Yo, sides, the bro. G's yeah. walk in G's and walk everything in fro- one, Bro, that's one of the best... <laughs> Songs he's ever put Me, out. In my I've opinion. I've played that song easily. Oh, bro, three four thousand times. If I go to, I'm going <laughs> to Spotify right now. If I go to like my most played Play. songs, G's it's definitely in. G's walked in. It's always on on all platforms. Mm-hmm. Is one of my most played songs, bro. Like mm-hmm. hands down. It's it's. I mean, okay. I love that love that track, bro. So give me a second artist or song you remember you hear for the first song, time and this, it had a choke choke. This, this, this was this Freddie Joaquin. Okay. A joke. Of, I, I could yeah, not, nigga. I thought, yeah. You put me on to him. Yeah. yeah. Fred, is it Freddie Joaquin or Freddie Joakim? It's Joakim, but I don't know if it's like because they say that the J O might be like Joaquin. Okay, but so it's, it's J O A C H I M. Freddie, Freddie, if you're listening to this, yeah. Is it Freddie Joakim or is it Freddie Joaquin? Long story yeah. short, though, nigga, you cold. He cold. He cold. He's one of those people where you hear one of his songs and you know it's his from the production. It's certain drums he does. J O A C H I M. You just know it's him, bro. And it's mm-hmm. so it's so crazy because mm-hmm. even though you're able to able to identify certain look nuances mm-hmm. in the song, mm-hmm. they don't sound the same. Mm-mm. You just tell his style. And it was he was actually the first producer, aside from like just Blaze and all of them, but they have tags yeah. on their stuff. But he was one of the first producers I could tell. One of his tracks just from listening to it in the, like the first ten seconds. So I remember the first time you let me hear Freddie Joakim, you were like, "Clint, listen to this." This was before J Cole put out that song mm-hmm. using that beat, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the, what's the song where he was talking about Kanye and I th- and he was and uh, Wale? He was talking uh, about Kanye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, false idols. I false think. idols. Uh, false poppers. That's up. Freddie Joakim's. Yeah. Beat. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. You put me on. I said, "Nigga, that shit." Cold. And you put me on the SoundCloud page. Yes, you put yes. me on the SoundCloud page. Because that's th- what you had to get most of the stuff before he had got it. He had. He wasn't on Apple then. No, he was not. It was just some saying. He's just on SoundCloud. Apple and Spotify now, but he wasn't on Apple then. And, I remember he got this uh, drink called Foreign Kisses. And, yes, oh, man. man. And I, I love that he used to on certain tracks on his earlier projects. Mm-hmm. He used to have people talking, kind of like how Jay Dilla did on that So Far Gone track mm. with Common. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And he had D'Angelo on there. Yep. And if you if it's out there, you can find the raw version because they they did a clean version of it. But the raw version has mm-hmm. the commentary from The Shining on there, mm. and it's just it's you can hear the record, Chris. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. That's yeah, that, oh, bro, and just, that's low different. key how like I remember I think R- Freddie Joakim got this song where I think it's with Marsha Ambrosius, mm-hmm. but the 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 singer he said, did a remix on it, yeah he did the joints with him yeah it's, but it just say Mar right and mm-hmm. I remember like yeah. I could hear the like small things right mm-hmm. I can hear. The re- like it may not have been a record, yeah. but I could hear the record scratching. Yeah, on yeah. on the record often. He's he's dope, bro. Big fan of Freddie Joker. Yeah, man. Big fan of Freddie Joker. Um, Who else you got? Or what, well, let me ask you: When did you start? When did you? When were you put on the Freddie? Or when? Two thousand and nine. Two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. That both. Yeah, both. So of, currency was oh six. Yep. And this was oh nine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, now we got three left, and I gotta I gotta be very strategic about this because I want to make sure that I'm picking artists that were recognized not only for their talent but like in transitionary parts of my life. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a big thing, and it also is. too, I want y'all to do us a favor too, right? Like every episode, I'm not talking about people you know, and I'm not arguing music about people you know. Mm-hmm. Part of this podcast is simply straight up. Yo, y'all, yo, if you hear us raving about it, you maybe you should go out. home and check yes. that shit out, dog. Yes. Like, you know, you don't, I'm pretty sure 90% of y'all don't know who Freddie Joakim is. Oh my God. Look He's him be up. Blessed. You will be, thank us later. Thank blessed. to hear later. Thank to hear later. What else you got? 
I'm to- you know what? I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna do go it. with Isaiah Rashad. I like Isaiah Rashad. I like Isaiah Rashad a lot. Um, I think the thing I like about him most is it, on his raps, he seems so comfortable. Mm-hmm. And when I when he he put out the um, Sylvia mixtape, I think mm-hmm. that might have been one of the first ones. He had only been rapping a couple years. Mm. Isaiah was just a natural, talented, just gifted words. Yeah, but he was just he was just naturally talented. Mm-hmm. So when he put out Sylvia and I caught wind of it, I was like, "Yo, who is this?" He got the southern draw with it, mm-hmm. and it's like country. And Where, where's just, he from? He from Tennessee, I believe. I, is yeah, he, he from Tennessee. I, I think he's from. I don't know. I don't know what part, but I, he's I think from he Tennessee. From, yeah, I believe he's from Nashville. I believe yeah. it. I don't. I don't know. Let me let me see. I'm gonna look it up right now, but. Yeah, man, uh, he is just a dope ass rapper and somebody that I resonate with on the country shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was he didn't seem like too. He wasn't he wasn't super focused on being the shiniest or the flyest. Oh. He was just like, let me get this music to you. Took his time with it. This is he's saying this is me. Yeah, I'm Isaiah Rashad. Here's what I like also about Isaiah. First of all, the first time I heard Isaiah Rashad. Um, I don't know the album, but I just remember the song. Rains, things stuck in the mud, mm. blah, 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 yeah. stuck in the mud. Yeah, yeah, blah, yeah. And I think that's with SZA, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's he got that one with SZA. Yeah. So Chattanooga, by the way. Chattanooga. Okay, Chattanooga. so I knew he was from. Yeah. So the first time I heard that again, Louis, Louis G put me on some more more music that I knew about. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I remember like the first time I heard him, I was like, yo, like he gives me. I'm not saying he's the same as Spitter, right? Mm-hmm. But Spitter picks very good beats. Yeah. Isaiah yes. Rashad does yes. the same thing. Yes. You know what I'm saying? They like, got that Ross ear. Yes. Yes. Ross got an ear for yes. that, bro. Yes. Ross got an ear for that. Yes. But yeah. it's not even just picking beats, right? Because mm-hmm. there's hot beats everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's how does a beat sound with your voice? Mm-hmm. And I think Currency, Rashad, Ross have a talent where they know this beat will sound good with yeah. my like like a song like We Gonna Make It, right? Yeah. That beat is hard. To this day. That beat is one, one of, of the, my favorite songs. It's one of the ever. best beats yeah. I've ever heard. But I don't think Ross would sound good on that. Mm. You see what and I'm saying? True. You gotta know a song that sounds good, but I don't one think, that sounds good with you. I don't think Ross would sound good on that. Same thing with mm, like Aston Martin. Let's take yeah. Aston Martin music, right? Yeah. I don't think Jada Kiss would sound that's good true. on that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, of course, we talk about one of the best rappers, period. But it's like, True. that beat specifically to me was for Rick Ross. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The way he slid on it. Yeah. When I'm alone in my room, like, nigga, you know what I mean? He went, he went in on that, dog. I, 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 I mean, mm. I, I, like I like this it. list so far, though. I, th- I appreciate it. I um, like this list. And when I was heard, the first I, time you heard Isaiah? I'm sorry. I heard Isaiah. Remember, the t- like, where were you at in life? You're, you're I t- think I heard him around... 2014. Mm-hmm. That's about and I was right. at, I was I was I was at the crib mm-hmm. back in Glendale and mm-hmm. um this is when Shit, I was in Glendale too. I, I, <laughs> so this is probably about a year after I had been married. Mm-hmm. Um and man, I think I was just like I was like, "Oh, it's time to kick it up a notch." Yeah. Cuz I got a wife, I got a daughter now. I got a You got, got responsibilities. Yeah, I got responsibilities. So like I remember just getting that and he was a good way to like balance the the, the grind and then mm-hmm. like on the way home, like chill music mm-hmm. and stuff like that, mm-hmm. still feel like mm-hmm. motivated and confident mm-hmm. with it. So mm-hmm. that's what Isaiah was for me, man. He was I like a good that. for that. I like that. Um, Let's go to your fourth guy, fourth person. My fourth person is actually a curator slash DJ. Come on. Joe, Joe K. K. Yeah, I knew it was coming. Joe K from Selection Radio. Find them on 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 Spotify, not Spotify, but uh, you find them on SoundCloud and now on Apple One. Uh, Selection Radio, Selection Radio, in my opinion, would never get the praise that they deserve yeah. for one putting so many people onto dope artists that mm-hmm. may have gone under the radar mm-hmm. until they were, you know, big world renowned mm-hmm. world renowned uh, artists. And I was like, that's cool, but like I like seeing the come up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I like like. Yo, finding out from about um, um, Children of Zeus. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, and they selling out everywhere come on, now. Come man. Come on, They man. selling out everywhere. Bro, we were talking to them. We, they were talking to us doing autograph albums, bro. We yeah. were buying the albums from these yeah, guys, dog. bro. Like, it's, it's. I mean, bro, it's, it's just amazing. Selection, yeah. Selection Radio was just uh, a blessing. 
at a, in a time when I needed it because mm. I, things were picking up for me and I didn't have the time to do deep dives the way mm-hmm. I used to mm-hmm. and just sit around and just listen to mixtape and, and, and find artists on, on Spotify. Mm-hmm. So so Lecture Radio was, was amazing because it allowed me to listen to a two-hour playlist mm-hmm. and probably not know 80% of the artists on but there. But it's hot. But it's hot. Mm-hmm. And it, it's rare you find somebody you trust that much to listen to their whole playlist for two hours. I trust Joe K. Oh, hell yeah. I trust Joe yeah, K. Yeah, absolutely. I trust absolutely. Joe K. I totally agree with yeah, that. Yeah, and Joe so, K, I probably found out about them probably about 2014, 2015, mm-hmm. around the same time. Actually, I might have heard of Isaiah Rashad from Joe K. Mm. No lie, I might have yeah, heard probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I might have heard of so That's probably 2014 yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, he was just, bro, he's just a dope dude. You know, uh, bumped into him a couple of times mm. at music festivals. Mm-hmm. Been super cool. Uh, yeah, man, Joe I wa- K. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to expound on Joe K. In one second, I want to mm. expound on him in one second. What I wanted to say about Joe K. was was that people always ask me, Clint, where do you hear this music at? Where do you find mm-hmm. these people at, Clint? Mm-hmm. Where do you, you know, how do you? And Selection is the number one spot. Yeah. After that, there's other ways. Of course, there's you just hear shit. You mm-hmm. in passing. I sometimes. Y'all, I'll be in the motherfucking urban outfitters. And if, yeah. I hear, if I hear some hot shit, Shazam it. I'm asking, yo, who, who this? Serious? Yeah. Good, yeah, dog. Another hack I found was um, you Shazam a song. And then, so I have a I have a subscription with Spotify, mm-hmm. Apple, and SoundCloud. So okay. I will Spotify, I mean, I'll Shazam a song, mm-hmm. and then I'll go to Spotify. Mm-hmm. And I'll have Spotify created radio station. Mm, yes, based yes. Based on that. And that'll help me to other artists in that same lane with that same sound. And now I'm going to get into that in a second or mm-hmm. later on in the podcast. But yeah. that is the second way I find yeah. music is an artist that may that that obscure artist that you may have found. Yeah. So like somebody like Freddie Jokum, right? Mm-hmm. You play him on Apple Music and you like, yo, create a playlist with people who either sound like him yep. or in the same ball ballpark as him. Yeah. And now you you a fan of. Ten other motherfuckers. Yep, absolutely. That's how it goes. So, absolutely. I agree. Okay, so that shit, you four. So real quick, man, again, when did you, and when did you uh, find out about... Around so- 2014. 2014. Mm-hmm. So yes, I got put on the selection, maybe, I think, I don't know, I think it was either you or Steph that put me mm-hmm. on. But um, I remember selection, um, I probably got into it probably around like, you know when I did? I remember. It was right around the time we was always going to Comfort LA like mm-hmm. every other week. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I remember like their playlist yeah. was Selection Radio. I think I got hip to them around Selection 265 or something like that. Mm-hmm. They've mm-hmm. got to be on like 500 something by now. Oh, man. I, I, yeah, I got to check. <laughs> they got to be on like episode 550 right now. Like, no one every week. Yeah. Yeah, so solid. Who's your fifth? It probably going to be Drake, bro. Drake? Probably gonna be Drake. There's nothing wrong with that. There's Probably gonna be Drake. I am a Drake stan, bro. And I think the true test of a, a, a fan is that you ride with that artist. Like, Tony Baker's a diehard Chicago Bears fan. Yes. Chicago Bears ain't making it to the Super Bowl no God time. God damn. Let's keep it real. <laughs> They're not. They're not. Nobody's expecting it, right? <laughs> I mean the Cubs every now and then we we think but Cubs the Bears, don't do shit either. Yeah, but but, but the, the Bears, Bears, come on, right? And black people but, in Chicago like the Sox. Yeah, we 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 but we know we appreciate that fandom. Mm-hmm. And for me, Drake, even with the the uh, the kind of house album, I can find a place for it. I have a whole playlist on SoundCloud mm-hmm. with that album and other songs so, uh, of that same. BPM. Honestly, as honestly, never mind. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's a great workout playlist. Mm-hmm. That is a fantastic. If you have, I know what people are gonna say. I ain't like that. That's fine. I get that. Listen to it in the gym. If you're doing hit workouts, high intensity workouts, yo, that is going to help you get through it. I promise you. So you sure that the, 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 the songs won't make you quit working out and say, you nah. know what? Honestly, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you did that. Honestly, you, did, you know what? You did that. You're working out. You're like, you know, this, you hear hey, the music. You know what? Honestly, it's, never, never mind. mind. <laughs> it's a good album to work out to, man. And it's also a good album for like, like you also got to think about like Drake got friends, f- fans over there in the UK. It's fans. They love that. 
They do. They love that they that do. house music like yep. that. So it's like I, I can appreciate all that push, pushes the limits mm-hmm. and tests the barrier and not afraid to. As somebody Drake's level, for them to do an album like that, he, it takes a lot of courage. He can do it though at his level, right? Yeah. Like let's be real, Drake doesn't have to make another album his his or another another piece of music. He's already cemented in music history. We're not just yeah. talking about hip hop. Yeah. So I mean, so let me ask you this. So let's t- now. So how you feel about Drake now? Yeah. Let's t- let's take it back. When how did you get to the point where you felt that way about Drake? So far gone. Yeah. Hands down. So far gone. Two thousand nine. That mixtape. I mean, there. Do you remember the never... first time you heard that mixtape? Two thousand nine. But I mean, like, I mean, when I say like, do you yes. remember where you where were Bro, you? The... I was in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. I was. Um, I think I was still a teacher. And for those of y'all that didn't know, yeah, I was a seventh grade science teacher. <laughs> I was still a teacher, and I remember. I don't know why that's funny to me, real quick, man. Bro, I remember. Did you put the kids on? Yes, <laughs> we played that in the morning. We played because that was around the same time the 808s and Heartbreaks yeah. came out. So 808s and was a year before, but yes, yes, I agree. So we were playing. We were playing the Kanye track. Mm-hmm. Um, Heartless. Um, uh, Heartless. They loved that, and then we were going to Drake. And I would have it if they, when they were working quietly, I would play it. And the students loved it. And it was just something that was, bro, I don't know what it was. I had never seen an artist. Why do I feel so alone? Yeah. Like, they get, like, I've never seen an artist. First, a new artist who have a song so hot that everybody hop on that track. Mm-hmm. Like, that, 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 the one where he talked about the side scroll, the Blackberry with the My side scroll. Fabulous did it. Yep. I feel like Jada Kiss did mm-hmm. it. Everybody hopped on them. And this is a true story. So I have a homeboy in Ford who works with Bame Joyner and it works with this chick, uh, Fatima. They, they all used to work together down in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. They booked Drake for $500 wow. and a hotel room and a flight. And he performed, I want to say, it wasn't, uh, I forgot the name of the club. Was it The Loft or something like that? But it was it was close to... Performing some old shit, yeah. Yeah, it was close to uh, 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 the, was it, uh, Atlanta, Atlantic Station down there. But mm-hmm. $500... And you can't even, hotel. bro. And, and keep in mind, at this time, he was already on the bubble. It had already come out that he had signed with Cash Money. Yeah, it, I mean, Young Money. It had already he had already got the nods from everybody. Mm-hmm. I got to host a concert he did there. Wow. Hollyweird opened up. There was wow. A whole group. He brought the city out. Trey Songz was there. Eric Sermon was there. Wow. Uh, Crime Mob was there. Little Scrappy was there. It, the, he brought the city out wow. to see him for five hundred dollars. He honored it because at that time he should have got ten, should have got ten thousand to twenty thousand for that. But he did the five hundred for five hundred because they had an email five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. You can't even be on the same street as Drake for five hundred dollars these days. <laughs> you you can't even be on like if Drake goes into a hotel, yeah. you can't check in on that floor. I don't give Drake. Like, Drake made it comfortable. For guys to express their feelings. Yes. Marvin's room yeah. is about a guy being in his feelings, thinking about his ex. I'm just saying, and like, fuck that nigga. Yo. And and a lot of guys act like they they weren't that person. Like uh, they, We they, all were that we guy. We all were that person at Listen, one point. My ex-girlfriend. Fuck that nigga. Yeah. I could, I'm could. i not saying which one. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> but. Bro, he, like, he, he, he made songs for. The hood, and yeah. he also made songs for guys that were in between the hood and still being on a professional tip. He made so his music was just great, bro. Let me tell you this: this is where you know you're a great artist. Because I remember where I was the first time I heard Drake. Uh, I remember it was 2009. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was living in the Kappa House in Philly. Wow! Right, I was living in the Kappa House, and I never forget. Uh, my 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 friend Dom was listening. Was like, yo. You got to hear this mixtape. Yeah. And he's like, yo, this nigga Drake, he's different. He can rap and sing. I ain't give a fuck about that. Right. Right. But the first track he ever played for me was Ignorant Shit. The mm-hmm. joint where he hopped mm-hmm. on. <sighs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I said, yo, the nigga can rap. Then I heard, then it was just from there. 
it was on. Yeah. Like every girl in the world. I remember that getting. I'm going to tell you what. I remember though. being at parties and you, you remember like. Yeah. Like every air. I like a long hand thick red and the whole club would Bro, go nuts. I remember he was so good at, at what he did. And we like I pictured him. videos before he, he well, some of them he didn't make a video for mm. when he said. I just see my ex, my ex, ex girl standing, standing with my next girl standing, standing with the girl that I'm fucking right now, now. and she I can pick, get weird if they, they all die. Now, bro, I just picture somebody like leaning on the railing <laughs> on the top floor of a club, standing next to his his girl, the ex right there, and he looking at a chick he want to fuck in the future, and I just. I was like, he was so vivid with the raps, yeah. bro. Ex girl standing with your next, next girl, girl standing with the girl. the girl that you fucking right now. We've at. all been in a party like that. Yeah. Well, not all, but a lot I've of, been, a lot of a lot, yeah, a lot of a lot of real niggas have. It happened to me at the Kappa House. Mm. No bullshit. My ex girlfriend at the time, or she, well, she was my girlfriend at the time, right? Mm. And I remember we wasn't we wasn't living together, but like you know, she was coming over. We fuck, we yeah. eat, you know what I mean, blah blah blah, right? What I'm saying is this was my girlfriend though, right? So she was coming over quite often, yeah. maybe five, six times a week. Mm-hmm. So we're mm-hmm. having a house party, and this is a Kappa house, nigga. Yeah. Like, it's up. Like, yeah. it's, it's up. It's, it's, it's up in there, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's up in there, dog. <laughs> but long story short, though, we at the crib or whatever. Uh, I'm dancing on this girl, mm-hmm. and that was going to be the next girl I was fucking. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I never get my, my girl looked at me, made eye contact, walked right upstairs. I knew it was on for the rest of the night. Yeah. And then, five minutes later, mm. my ex-girlfriend walks into the party. Mm. So my girlfriend was upstairs. The girl I was going to be fucking, probably like two weeks, was dancing with me. Mm-hmm. And my ex-girl walked in. Drake, you're a genius. Dang. You're a genius. You're a genius. Hey, man, this is a solid list. Hey, man, I'm, I'm satisfied with this it. Is a, this is a solid The first time you heard these people. Yeah. Currency, Jokem. Isaiah Rashad, Joe K, Drake. Yeah. I like this list. Yeah. I like this I like list. the fact that this list has time to it to it. I yeah. mean, aside from Isaiah Rashad and Joe K, but mm. I still hold them in very high regard. I mean, this this Not list these, is but let's be real. Nobody, you heard him in 06. Yeah. You heard nobody on this list is corny now. Nobody. Nobody played out. Nobody. These are all. I like, I like my list. I like your list, man. Yeah. I'm going to erase it real quick because I'm going to make my list. Okay. All right. And to hear what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my list a little bit more niche, right? Oh, really? Yeah, I'm going to make my list. I'm about to give you flowers real quick, bro. I don't do that a lot to a lot of people on this podcast. A lot of people don't put me on the music. I got five artists you put me on to oh, wow. that I still listen to to this day. And I can tell you when I heard them. All right. So we got Clint's list. For to hear joints. Number one. It's gonna be interesting. Tuxedo. Woo! Tuck fucking Cedo. Good All right. Good Anytime uh the first you 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 was we was in your car. Yeah. Uh I don't know where we were going, I don't know where we was coming from, but we was in your car, and I remember the first track you let me hear was on their album Tuxedo 2. Yeah. Yep. And the song was called, It's So Good, It's So Good. Mm. It sounds long. And I said, nigga, who? He's like, nah, keep going. Like, And we yeah. went down the album. I'm like, nigga, this shit is fire. crazy. This shit is fire. Yeah. Who are these niggas? Two white guys. Mayor Hawthorne, and I forget the other guy's name. But, but we, yeah. yeah, Hawthorne. Yeah, Mayor yeah. Hawthorne. Two white guys in tuxedos yeah. making funk music for today. Bro, it's, it's crazy. Let me see who the other guy is, because I want to say... I don't know his name, but, yeah. but we know Mayor Hawthorne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. say all that to say, right, I'm a big fan. You So here's the thing, right? One thing you know about me is you be like, yo, Clint, man, I know you know the old schools and blah, blah, yes. blah, blah, blah. Yes, That Those albums were funk. Yes. You know I like funk. Yeah, yeah. That was, like, nigga, I remember getting in your car and we were riding around. I w- I'm trying to think what kind of car you had at the time. You uh, didn't have the Affinity at the time, though. No, this is this we might have been in the Focus. Nah, well, the Focus, yeah. We might have been focus. in the Focus. Probably the Focus, because if it wasn't the Ultima, after the Ultima was the Infinity, and then after that was the Focus. It was yeah. the Focus. Yeah, we was in the Focus, nigga. And I remember, and I, I could put a year to this. I got put on the Tuxedo right around 2017. Oh, definitely the Focus. Yeah. Yep. Definitely the Focus. 2017. 2017. And the reason why I remember that, right? Is because I remember the girl I was with at the time. Not gonna say her name. You know mm-hmm. who she is. Yeah. Um, no, that was the time you actually. The girl at the time had stopped you 
and was like, yo, what's up with Clint? How he been? And uh-huh. you like, well, nigga, text him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you was like, nigga, you said, nigga, text him. But 2017, yeah. I remember like, I was, so you put me on yeah. the tuxedo. I put her on the tuxedo. That is. I put her on the tuxedo. Hey, man, good music will survive, man. Tuxedo, dog. Good music will spread like a plague, baby. Now, one thing I got to say is I've never seen tuxedo live in that bothers me. Me neither. They play a lot of, so I remember they were downtown one day, but mm-hmm. I was on the road. I couldn't go, right? But tuxedo, they, they're somebody I feel like I have to see live. Yeah. They have, because you got to remember, they were live instrumentations and blah, blah. Oh, man. Bro, they got songs with Battle Cat now. They got songs with, like, bro, they they epitomize today's funk. Yeah. Tuxedo. Yeah. I remember the first time you put me on them. A lot of people don't know about them. Go listen to some Tuxedo. What you like about Tuxedo? Um, I love the fact that they are able to curate a sound Mm -hmm. that is completely foreign from today's landscape of music. Mm Mm-hmm. You don't have a lot of artists that's doing what they do. And it is it doesn't feel forced. That was kind of like uh Silk Sonic, how they're creating that crooner music yeah. and that you know, slash funk, slash R and B, and the album doesn't sound forced. So that's how I felt about like with them making funk music, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you got two white guys. It doesn't feel like they're appropriate yeah. funk. That's the thing. Yeah. They're not appropriate like if I feel like George Clinton, Roger and Zap, all those guys yeah. would hear Tuxedo and be like, okay, funk has evolved to this. Yeah. I'm not mad at it. Yeah. I'm yeah. not mad at it. I mean, but you had you had that in the 70s, though. You had white people doing the, yeah. the, the funk and they, they were doing the R&B in the 70s. So yeah. I, yeah. Can, I can appreciate what they... I agree. Totally. I agree with their sentiments. When did, when did, how did you get put onto them before you put me onto them? Uh, I think two dope boys put me on the tuxedos. That, that, uh, they, they, was, they, they, was that was a sounding board. That was a dope ass site, man. Yeah, it's still up. It's still two dope boys.com. Yeah. Uh, boys with a Z on the end of mm-hmm. it. Go check them out. They are still very in touch mm-hmm. with the sound of today and mm-hmm. new artists, and they will put you on to a lot of good mm-hmm. music. Two dope boys.com for sure. Facts. Okay. I'm going to go to my second artist. Let's go. I'm excited. Second artist that you put me on to. Number two, believe it or not, Mr. Anderson. Yes! I'm so glad you said him because I was feeling bad I didn't put him on my nah, list. Man, Mr. Anderson Pack. Now. Yo. Now. Yes. Now. I missed Venice when it first came out. Mm-hmm. I didn't know about Venice. Mm-hmm. I missed I missed it. You know what I mean? And I went back. Who put you on? Yeah. Who put you on about mm-hmm. <laughs> that's my yes. shit, you know what I mean? Um but Anderson Pack, first time I heard him, we were at the all deaf digital office. It was 2016, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember it, Malibu was out at this point. Yeah. And yep. I never heard Malibu. But you had put me on to the song uh it was it was it wasn't come down, it was uh uh uh, I only got uh, to play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's yours. It's mine. Only look at the time. No break. It's, it's, it's yours, it's, not mine. Like me, like yes. that. When I heard that, I said, "Who the fuck?" Look at the time. Yeah. I said, "Who the fuck?" And then I remember I, I told you at the time. I said, "This nigga can't sing." Yeah. Right. No, no, no. He can't sing. Right. Like. Right. And I'm not saying. Like he's not like he don't he's not like he's yeah. not that. But the, he but found it, a lane. But he can sing. Yeah. Like he can't sing, mm-hmm. but he can sing. Yeah. It's like Anderson Pack has the one of the most unique voices. Yes. I've ever like. There's no way you hear Anderson Pack and say he sounds like this guy. Yeah. He sounds like who does he sound like? Nobody. Who does he, he sound like? He don't sound like no. And and, and the make sure that, I put the dot in there. Yeah. Too. He yeah. You pay for that. Paid for the dot. You know, forget that dot, nigga. You paid for that. Um, he doesn't sound like anybody. No. And the only person I would compare him to, mm-hmm. talent-wise, mm-hmm. honestly, and I know some people might get no, upset. No, say it. Say it. Prince. Nigga. Prince, Let me tell y'all something. The showmanship, the, the, the musical composition, the way he handles the crowd, him on the drums, singing. Do niggas know how hard it is to play the drums and sing at the same time? fucking time because he's keeping the tempo for the rest of the instruments so if he messes up they can mess up he doesn't mess up he does not i've never heard i put it like this don't miss i've never heard nothing corny from anderson pack 
I'll take it, bro. I've never I'll, heard nothing I'll corny from Anderson Peck. And on top of that, I'll go a step further. I got the opportunity to see him right before he became a superstar. Yeah, same. 2016, mm-hmm. live at the Palladium. Mm-hmm. He brought out Stevie Wonder. He brought out Busta Rhymes. Nigga, he played the drums. Do, 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 do. Yes. Do. Like, yes. do, 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 do. Nigga, so, but I just remember that concert was sold out, packed to the wall. Yes. And I remember that arguably was one of the best concerts I had ever been to. Anderson Pack at the Palladium 2016. If you were if you were there, let me know. I saw him first time at um Ace Hotel, downtown LA. Mm-hmm. And that concert was so amazing. I went home, I told my wife about it. I said, wherever he's playing next close to us, we're, we're going. going to it. We drove to Vegas. Saw him at the House of Blues there. <laughs> We were standing room only. It was like, nah, we need to sit down for this. Yeah. <laughs> the tables. It was one of the best concerts we had been in. Anderson. And he put me at the concert. His DJ was playing music. Put me on to, uh, oh, what's her name? Um, mm. Urban Flower is the name. Flora is the, is mm. the name of the album. Mm-hmm. But it, that's that joint right there. Is it Sabrina Claudio? Is that Sabrina Claudio? I don't know. But put me on to that joint. Put a couple, on, of, yeah. a, put a on. couple other joints. Uh, then we saw him in San Diego, uh, and, he, mm-hmm. and, he, and uh, Earl Sweatshirt was featuring for him. Mm-hmm. Um, old name used to be Breezy Lovejoy. Yes, it was. Yep, Breezy Lovejoy. He got he got albums under Breezy, Breezy Lovejoy. Lovejoy. Go check out those projects too. Yo, he's just, he's amazing artist, bro. Yeah, yo, yeah. Amazing. So I, I, I love remember when you up. put me on pack. I remember love when it. you put me on pack. So there's that. Oh shit! Let me let uh, let, let me ask you this. It's number three. Let me let me ask you. This. Does he come back on your list? Who? Anderson. I, yeah. Hey, what do you mean? Yeah, Silk Sonic? No. With the Free Nationals? No. Who you talking about? Because I feel like we might need to put a slash on that for no worries. You know what? So once I found out about Anderson Pack, mm-hmm. then I went down to No Worries Library. Yeah. First of all, if y'all don't know about No Worries, Man. this nigga and knowledge, knowledge. Knowledge, Man. knowledge got beats that make you sit there and you can you can literally rock out for for hours listening to the same song, bro. This latest No Worries joint with with it was No Worries and her, yeah. nigga. I ran hers verse back mm-hmm. at least twenty times. Mm-hmm. And then it ends with your signs and your pieces. I put two and two together like a sequence. I promise that it's on the defense, nigga. <laughs> You want to no. know where I've been? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that shit is oh. Yeah, li- bro. I know you put a lot of things. Let me tell you something. Me. I'm going to say the shit, bro. Because we often wait till people are going to, to give those accolades. Mm-hmm. Knowledge can... It, I mean, and I know he's he's, he's more on the, the remixing and, and taking... Songs Don't matter. And, and, but, bro... He he got J Dilla level. I, I'm skill. not disagreeing with that. He got J Dilla level. I'm not level disagreeing skill. with that. He got it, bro. The thing is, we wait till artists get old and stuff to really yeah. appreciate their greatness and stuff like yeah. that. Like, no, nah, dog. What Anderson Pack is doing? What Knowledge is doing? We need. We're witnessing this now. This is greatness, bro. Right now, right now. Let me go to my number three, man. Number three, you put me on to Children of Zeus. Woo! Come on. Children of Zeus. Come on, man. Now, I can honestly say that those guys are my friends. Yeah. Not only that, if y'all ever listen to it, all of my playlists, right? Mm-hmm. I always sneak a song in from there. Got to. I always, there's never a playlist where there's no PJ Morton mm-hmm. and no Children of Zeus. They are on any playlist that I curate. I find a way. I don't know. Just if you just be like, yo, he just got a random Children of Zeus track on him. Cause that's my friends. Yeah. I yeah. remember when you put me on to them niggas. 2017, again. Mm-hmm. But this time, so we was at the uh we was at the all deaf office. I remember. I was eating. So anybody that knows me, when I used to be at the all deaf office, I was oh. notorious for stealing the waffles. <laughs> <laughs> I was I would steal like four or five waffles a day. Niggas be like, where the waffles? Clint. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hey, hey, man, look, I was going viral, nigga. Y'all was giving me $300 a video. I'm getting some waffles, nigga. <laughs> Fuck that, nigga. 25 million views, I can get some motherfucking waffles without nobody saying nothing to me. It's the very least. It's the very least. Waffles, <laughs> nigga. Yeah. I wasn't using the studio space. Waffles. Mm-hmm. And orange juice. Yeah. Long story short, though, um, 
as I'm eating these waffles, mm-hmm. though, you come over and you like, yo, listen to these niggas. Tell me this singer don't sound. Tell me who this singer sounds like. First time, I, first song I heard was doom, 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 out right now, around. Mm-hmm. Come smoke with me. Yeah, yeah like. I'm going to cue them up. So I had doom, that doom, doom. <laughs> yeah. So I said, so I've been hearing just call me when you need me, mm-hmm. yeah, and I'll be around, yeah. And I remember I heard him, and I was like, "This nigga sounds like Raphael Sadiq." Mm-hmm. And then I hear more of them, and I'm, and then I follow, and and thank God that was early in the journey, right? Yeah. So they had put out two albums since then. Like that was a very that was a mixtape, I believe. Mm-hmm. But that mixtape was good enough to be an album. Dun, 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 dun. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I say that to say like. That was the first time like I fell in love with a group because I felt like the music they were making was like I'm gonna be honest with you, yo. Y'all might get mad at me, but them motherfuckers over there in England got more soul these days than some of them people here. They putting out some good shit. The motherfuckers over there they put at the music and honestly, some of the shows. I've been, gangs yeah. of uh, gangs the, of uh, London. Come on, man. And that motherfucker go hard. Come on, baby. man. And then and then Children's Zeus introduced me to Black London yeah. or Black England. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like they got and a lot of their music not only just has you know not only just R and B, but they got their little island rhythm today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. Children's Zeus puts out. I ain't heard nothing corny from them yet. Good. I'll be they seeing good. motherfuckers at their concerts be like yeah. be in they unison. Get, they in it. They, they be in getting it. it, dog. Yeah. Like, so yeah, yeah, I remember you. I remember the day you put me on. Bought me one of their albums. Mm-hmm. I still have the album. Mm-hmm. And uh, yo, man, I, I've been they, I've been rocking with them niggas ever since. Hey, I've been rocking I'm, with I'm them. Glad niggas. to hear. I've been rocking with them I'm niggas ever since. Glad to hear, man. man. So 2017, I got put on Children the Children's Zoo. Zoo. Yes, sir. All right, number four. Mm-hmm. Number four. Now. This is an indirect. It's an indirect, right? But Larry June. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you how I found Larry June. Mm-hmm. I found and, Larry and, June and. because you put me on currency. Remember earlier in the podcast, I said, I'll get back to this later. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep going. <laughs> Numbers. Oh, man. So, I was listening to this currency. Uh-huh. And, of course, then after that, they are playing everybody, right? Yeah. And I'm like, so um, I hear organic smooth, uh, smoothies in 91. Mm-hmm. And I remember the first time I heard it, uh, this was 2020, mm-hmm. during the pandemic. And I'm like, doom, 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 like that Bay mm-hmm. Area knock. I'm like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. So then I go down this catalog. Here's what made me love Larry June. Larry June on his... Um, on the first track of that album, right, mm-hmm. with organic smoothies and stuff, has a uncle named Herm. Mm-hmm. And anybody that knows me knows my dad's name is Herm. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you got an uncle named Herm and he over there, and he not rapping. Yeah. He just talking. Good job, Larry. Just stay in ovations. Yeah. You know, don't, like, he's, like, yeah. talking motivation. I'm really sitting there like, that's my dad talking to me, yeah. you know? So, Larry Jr., your uncle Herm, it's my Uncle Herm now, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and, and low key, it got me through one of the roughest periods yeah. of my life. Larry June and Uncle Herm yeah. got me through my Herm not being here no yeah. more. And honestly, my dad would like Larry June. Hey, he's so cool. He don't do too much, bro. Larry June gives you what he can give you, what he's good at. He 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 gives you what what he's good at. He he he, he spits he's it. consistent. He's consistent. And it's a flow that you can respect. Right. And you know what else I like about June? He's not talking about nothing that's... Like, yeah, he a street nigga for, for the most part, mm-hmm. right? But it's like organic organic foods. Drink your water. Drink your water. Don't worry about me. Don't check me, bitch. Check your credit score. Yeah. Mining your business. Get you some plants. Get you some fucking plants. Damn, it's a, he's You talk about a soft lifestyle. Mm-hmm. If you ever follow this nigga... He just be chilling. He be chilling. One of his lines, he says, I don't really fuck with... He said, I don't really fuck with niggas. I be biking and shit. Take a little model bitch and take a hike and shit. It. Nigga, what? <laughs> Nigga, what? Yes. I be taking... I, be I t- like rappers that promote healthy lifestyles. Yeah. It's not always just about kicking it and shit like that. Like, bro, you no. can't kick it 24-7. What you doing with them other hours? Right, exactly. You know what I mean? And then, and then the last thing I remember, he said... Yes, he said... Today I might go and hit the farmer's market. Mm-hmm. Yesterday I paid some bills and I went to Target. Nigga. Real shit. That's re- Watering My Plants is probably my favorite song doom, from Larry doom, June. Doom, doom. And it's just, it's just a, 
good. It's just a good. It's just a good song. If bro. you know about me, you know I'm gonna get it. Like, <laughs> hey, bro, that boy said. Uh, I don't really be commenting. I left a couple oranges on your on your comments. <laughs> that was that. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's like, hey, I ain't doing a whole lot. I'm of just this, leaving man. oranges in your comments. Yeah, you know I'm saying you know what it is. You see the oranges, bitch. You know what it is. <laughs> you know what it is. Come on, man. I'm gonna tell you this about one thing. One last thing about Larry June. You don't like when it comes to. You know, like you can't be a bum mm-hmm. after you hear a Larry June album. It make you want to get your shit together. It really does. You make can't you be a together. bum, dog. Yeah. Larry June is the top five motivational rappers up there with Jeezy and them niggas. Hey man, hey, cause Jeezy will do it. Yeah. So Larry Jeezy G- will do it. Twenty twenty. All right. And then last. Oh shit! I'm interested to see who this is. <laughs> so last, you put me on to. Uh, Cooking soul. Cooking soul. Now. Damn, we talked about that one earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go the fifth one, my fifth one. Mm-hmm. It's Cooking Soul. Cooking Soul. Now, what I heard this, again, we were talking about it earlier in the podcast. Mm-hmm. I was listening to, and they got so many other things outside of that mixtape they did. Or, yes, or, I think you know, he did one. Let me, let me check. But Cooking Soul, if, for those who don't know, they just like, it's like a remix. Like It's one guy, I think. Uh, and I think he might be Mexican, because I, I, I recently looked up a picture of him. Uh, I don't care who he is or what he do or what he that motherfucker. He made the, so there's a song by Nas called Second Childhood on yes. on on the Stillmatic album. To me, he made the song better. Yes. So okay, this what it was. Cooking Soul and DJ Don Cannon did a remix album for mm-hmm. Drake's. Uh, thank us later. Well, thank me? they thank me later. And it, but they called it thank, thank us, us later. later. Yep. Go check that one out too. And then Cook and Soul did one for Nas. Mm-hmm. Go check that motherfucker out too. Now these are albums you're gonna have to find on like that Piff or that mixtapes mix or, or SoundCloud or something mm-hmm. like that. But I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Faith, I totally agree. And yeah, man, this and you put me on Cook and Soul. I think around like 2014 ish. Mm-hmm. I want to say about 2014. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and um, you know what? <laughs> Niggas don't know this, right? And I'm gonna I'm speak to this, right? A lot of the, a lot of this music you put me onto, mainly cooking soul, right? Mm-hmm. And I know there was other times, but niggas don't remember. Niggas don't know this, and we I'm gonna tell this story here, bro. During the week, we were painting houses. Oh my god, Clint! We were painting nigga. houses. Me and this nigga were painting. We ho- were painting in Beverly Hills, painting houses, not knowing how to paint. <laughs> Exactly. We're, we're not certified. We just like, all right, well, fuck, we gonna we need, some we tape need the up. money. We need the money. We need the money. We, nigga, we have been in the my nigga. You bro, know, we was paying. So for those of y'all that know, right? So when I was opening for DL, I wasn't getting that much money on yeah. the road, right? I had to, I had to, because I wasn't selling merch at the time either. Yeah. I had to save up so I could go on the road, get my flight, hotel, blah 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 blah. And then you know he give me some money, but it yeah. wasn't enough to Niggas really don't know. But the y'all, pains. I, I was putting in the work and I was painting houses so I could have the money to go travel to do fucking eight minutes with DL Hughes. You can't tell me I don't work hard or you motherfuckers know about working hard. Painting fucking, and people don't realize, painting houses ain't easy. Bro, did we High have, ass ceilings. She had to get a ladder from her neighbor because what she wanted painted, the exposed beam, the exposed yeah. wooden beam, yes. was so high. Yes. The ladder she had did not reach it. She had to get one from her neighbor because we were on task. Clint was on task rabbit. Task rabbit. <laughs> task rabbit. And I think she paid us like seven hundred. So like first, the, the, the first thing she was only gonna pay us like two hundred. Yeah. And when she seen how much work we was doing, she's like, you know what? I gotta be fair. I can't do that to these motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. Like, and I we was gonna take the two hundred. Like yeah. it was just like, yo, I need the fucking money. I need the money, bro. So a lot of this music, bro, oh reminds me of that time, though. Oh it reminds my God. me of that time putting in the work. Put in the and, work. And let me tell y'all this, and that's what sharing music does. It creates memories and it creates yes. long lasting events that you'll never forget about. Bro, I'll never forget being in the trenches with you. I'll never forget painting houses. I'll never forget what else the fuck we do. Tough mutters. I'll never <laughs> I forgot you did a tough mutter too. Oh my God! We really put each other on, mm-hmm. bro. Mm-hmm. We really put each mm-hmm. other on, bro. You don't you don't forget shit like that, man? So you know, I wanted this episode specifically for you because I wanted to give you your flowers, man. Uh, music is a love language. Partly is 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 a is a thing because you made it a love language for me, my brother. I appreciate, I appreciate that. you, man. Thank you for putting me on all these dope artists. Hell that, yeah! That's how it's supposed to be fucking done. 
Nigga. That's how it's supposed to be done, man. Wow. Yeah, man. That was amazing. I just took a trip down memory lane real quick. Come on, dog. I remember it was in Seattle. (laughs) (laughs) Yo. I remember it like it was you was doing the starting line. I was doing the finish line. Wow. I remember that. Okay. Well, shit, there it is, man. There There it it is, is. man. That is that that's the list, man. Um, again, man, no. thank you for coming on. Uh, Absolutely. What you, what you got going on right now, man? Um, I got a new show coming out called Dive in the DMs with Roxy Hayes. Still on tour with Kev on stage, coming to a city near you. If you mm-hmm. haven't already been there, uh, more to the story. Me and my wife's podcast is out now. Uh, and uh, low key, we doing a. Uh, if you know what Hito is and in, in the grill, Jamaica, we're bringing Hito to L. A. We're gonna be out in. Uh, you know, we're gonna be out somewhere. So if you're interested in that, just keep following. Just me. real quick, what's he though? Just so people. It's a, it's a, it's a lifestyle resort in, uh, <laughs> in, 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 in the Grill, Jamaica. Uh, uh, what so is yeah. this? What's the lifestyle? Hey man. Hey man. You know what I'm saying? One of them things. You know what I mean? uh, but yeah, man. If, if you tap into the, the podcast, you'll see exactly what, me, what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Me and my wife, we have a great time. It's my best friend. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we out here, bro. We out here. To hear more on everything. Yes, sir. Yo. Mm-hmm. Thank you for coming on, bro. Thank you for having you know, me, You're man. welcome to come on any motherfucking time you back. want. Anytime you want, back. man. Anytime you want. Y'all, thank y'all for listening. Y'all, do me a favor. Do me a favor. You said you like nice podcasts. Yeah. Podcasts where you either learning something yeah. or podcasts where they got something positive to say. Nigga, you shared the fuckboy shit. Shared that was all this. up and down your timeline. Yeah. If I do a video right now, these bitches be... Now they own it. Y'all own it. They own it. Nigga, share this. Share the positivity. Share it, man. And let me tell you why that's important real quick before we get up out of here. Spitter, one of my favorite rappers, Mm -hmm. one of his favorite rappers, he was doing an interview and he he, he talked about why he raps about what he raps about, which is basically cars, smoking, Mm -hmm. women, good fashion, luxury, that type of stuff. But Mm -hmm. just just having a good time. Yeah. Um, he don't talk about killing a whole lot of niggas no. and all that type of stuff. That's not no. his vibe. And if you remember, Kanye never talked about that either when he was coming out. No, he and didn't. we love that nigga. Yeah. When you speak that positivity, mm-hmm. he said the reason he did that, he, when he was with No Limit, he had wrote a song about killing a nigga and running up in his house and all that. Yeah. And then one day he was sitting down, he was thinking about like, man, what is mama going to feel like if I do mm-hmm. something like that, right? Mm-hmm. And the reason he raps about what he raps about is because he creates a positive vibe. A positive vibe. Mm-hmm. So that's why he can walk through the crowd at his concerts mm-hmm. and he can smoke weed with his fans. Mm-hmm. There ain't nobody trying to run up on the snatch mm-hmm. chain. And, mm-hmm. and, so positivity is a good thing. If you mm-hmm. had a good time watching this, if you could relate to anything, if you go check out one of these artists, share this. Yeah. So you can continue to help spread the artistry of music. Yeah. Uh, continue to support Clint. Continue to support me. Con- continue to support podcasts and dope ass music, man. So yeah, so man. We, we we need y'all, dog. And yeah, this 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 podcast is something that I wanted to do. First of all, I'll tell you real quick, last thing. Yeah. When you heard I was doing this podcast, you like that's not far from this. What this no, nigga? No, it was perfect. It was that's right not, in line. Anybody that knows me knows like this is this, that's this is this is it. This is me, man. I I was glad. I was like. He, he got the fans, he garnered his, his crowd, his, his audience, and then he switched it. Switched it up. Tell me what he wanted to do. And if either y'all with me or you're not. Yeah, I love it. You know what I mean? I love it. He's standing up the whole time, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, he's, niggas should get some praises on that alone. He's standing <laughs> up the whole time for y'all. So, but you know what's crazy? Up. I'm standing up, and I just, but I still, I can talk music all day. I don't mm-hmm. get tired. Mm-hmm. I'm not tired. So, all right, y'all. Thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for laughing. This podcast is over.